So for any type of investor, they're looking for future earnings. They're looking at the level of earnings, the, the certainty around earnings and or uncertainty and whether earnings will grow over time. Um, having said that, we then have to consider different types of investors. And there's four main types I want to speak to. All of them will care about how a company's management team believes their business is going to impact with an increasingly green world. All of them will expect a company's management team to be able to articulate what's their regulatory risk as voter preferences around climate change are expressed, what's their customer risk or their risk to revenue and earnings as customer preferences get expressed, what's their risk of being disrupted by green tech and clean tech technology, and are they going to be a disruptor or are they at risk of being a disruptee, a firm that gets disrupted? Um, with that said, there's four main categories of companies that fit different investment perspectives. One important perspective is that many institutional investors are very long-term oriented and hold a globally diversified portfolio, you know, passively managed global stock index fund would be the classic example, but hold a share in the global economy. So they take what's called a universal shareholder perspective, meaning they hold a share of the global economy. There is no such thing as an externality for them. If one company emits carbon and the rest of the economy has to offset that over time, that's not an externality that can be ignored. That's going to impact the earnings to their total portfolio. That universal shareholder perspective tends to coincide with the second group, which I'll call the screen for green uh, crowd of investors. But you can also end up in a screen for green case if your stakeholders are voters. And if the voters in your particular domicile demand a green approach, then you're going to be screened for green, whether you have a universal shareholder perspective or not. However you get to that, if you're screening for green, you're going to invest in green co in companies and you're going to invest in financing disruptive technology investment aimed at disrupting the business model of brown companies. A uh, third category of investor type is the crowd that's looking to invest in brown companies, but help them become green, help move the economy from brown towards green over time, from more carbon emitting to less carbon emitting. And they're going to be looking for corporate management teams to articulate their own journey along that path and how they're going to reduce their emissions and offset their emissions over time. The last crowd is becoming more rare, at least in the West, and it's it's investors that will invest in unabashedly brown companies that don't really have a plan to become greener. They're kind of trapped in the brown space. And there they're going to expect a very clear articulation of what are you doing to the extent you can to mitigate policy risk, consumer preference risk, and disruptive technology risk around what you're doing and they're going to discount the earnings if, if the company doesn't have good answers about how they're evolving their business model to deal with that, which a unabashedly brown and stained brown company may not have good answers along those lines. So um, different, different stories from the corporate management team to the different investment types to kind of fit their preferences for, for earnings profiles. But one thing that's common to all of them is you can't have hypocrisy. You can't have a gap between what you say as a corporate management team and what you actually do throughout your business. If you declare a goal at the senior level, you need to map that down into KPIs. You need to measure the intermediate goals to achieve that goal within the business. If you don't, in a social media enabled world, your own employees are likely to out you as an employer that's engaged in greenwashing, that's saying one thing and doing another. And then whichever crowd you, you wanted to be part of, whichever investment investor type you were trying to attract, you're gonna have a problem if you get in the headlines for greenwashing. Let me split the financial services industry into two broad categories of players. One is the 7,000 plus investment managers that are out there offering actively and passively managed investment strategies. And the second is everybody else in the financial services industry. For investment managers, it's important that you articulate what is the thesis of your strategy? Is it a universal shareholder argument? Is it a green investment, either, either impact fund or themed fund? Is it a brown to green investment thesis? What are you offering? What's the risk return advantage of that strategy against other strategies? And then how are you going to measure and help help your investors measure the actual impact on climate change, on carbon mitigation, the underlying impact you're having on, on the risk that they're trying to mitigate? So if you can do those three things, articulate where your strategy fits for what type of investor, what's the risk return advantage and why? And how are you going to measure impact and, and how, how will that be reported? That's the recipe for success as an investment manager. For the rest of the financial services industry, we all have a role to play in helping uh, match up client demand for investment opportunity 
with companies and their business strategies about investing in the real economy to achieve change. And whatever role the company is trying to play, that that needs to be financed. And in particular, the clean tech and green tech investment, that that disruptive technology investment that's going to drive us in a non-linear way that we can't predict towards mitigating the risk of climate change, that investment needs to be financed. It needs to be explained. It needs to be uh, marketed to the investment community and funded as it scales if it's going to have the impact and if we're going to science our way out of this and invest our way out of this. <laughs>